Welcome to another live show. I'm Nigel Main. I'm your host. Thank you for joining me. Have a good, an interesting show today. Um, and but I, I would say one of the things I need to say right at the very beginning is that because I, I, was, I was watching um, a YouTube video this morning and they were saying about these hooks and the things that you need to say with your with your short videos and so on. Well, this isn't a short video, not by any stretch. But one of the critical things is. In your history, in your business history, how successful has it been generating new business, specifically new business? 
and we just get rid of this. So we're looking at, at new business. How, how, how well has it happened? Whether the past year, five, 10, 15, 20 years, how persistently, consistently have you been able to generate new business on your terms? And if you haven't, if that's not happened to you, or you can't kind of put your finger on it, you, you need to keep watching this. This, is, this really, really, really is for you. And this isn't about some marketing spiel or anything, nothing to do with that. But it's really, really important. Watch this. If, the, if you do the, if you, it's the only thing you've done all week, watch this. And if you've, if you've got another meeting to go to, you know you can watch it on catch up. But it's really, really important you watch this. So. Um, the kind of the format that we have, if you're if you're new to the show, is that I, I kind of we, we've got some um, we have so I, I kind of use slides, and um, this isn't death by PowerPoint. I tr trust me, because it looks like this. So we've got we've got our our, our, our information, bit of information there, it helps keep me on track, and that's. <laughs> that's really important to, to, that I keep I keep on track. But the, the point is, is that um, you saw this on the on the the um, on the ads on, on LinkedIn and predominantly the people I'm speaking to are on LinkedIn. So um, this, this, this for startups and scale ups and the sins you, you, you don't know you're committing. It's because of I could you could say misinformation. That's the best way to put it. You'll, you, it will become blatantly obvious as we as we move through this 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 show. And really, the, the thing is, is that um, if you knew what to expect, if you, what, what should you expect? I'm going to talk about stuff that I think really, really does impact you as a, as a business owner, someone that's involved, specifically involved in generating new business. This, these live streams are not designed for marketers. And I, it's not, I'm not cynical about marketers. I just think that they are not doing the right thing for businesses, period. And it might sound brutal, but my view, you, you don't need to get, get rid of them. They can go. I'm serious. I'm, I'm absolutely serious. Um, people might say, what are you talking about? How, how could you say that? How can you say that marketing people are not valid, not, ne not needed? Um, all you have to do is ask your salespeople, what do they think? Because they're the ones that are being affected by it. Anyway, before I get onto that, let's go back to this. Sales Exchange is a consultancy. It's me, um, supported 100% by my wife and she does lots of work with me. But the, um, the, the point is this, I'm a, a single individual who has been involved in, in selling and shifted across to marketing because I thought I was missing a trick. Next year, I'll be doing this for 40 years. I know, I know, don't, I know, I couldn't possibly, he looks too young for that. Yep, great. 40 years next year, I started selling in 1984 in Mayfair. So I pursued this, the, 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 the most, the largest deal I did was four and a half million. Um, that was direct, selling direct telecoms related kit and so on. And the largest thing I did online was that the largest single one off sale was three and a half million. So I, I likelihood that I know what I'm talking about is fairly high. Yeah. And I've been doing it longer than most people that I come across. Because not because but in light of that in light of knowing that there is a fundamental problem there, and I, I just couldn't put my finger on it. Yeah, I couldn't work it out. And because of that, um, I, I kind of made it my crusade. It's the, it's the, it's the reason I do this. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> so who's the show? And I, I mentioned here the website. Who's the show and website for? Because there's a very, very large website that accompanies these shows and what we do. Um, and... It's, it's designed specifically for CEOs, managing directors, the business owners, people that are responsible for generating revenue. Whether you're an employed CEO or you're a, uh, an owner-manager CEO, irrelevant. And you can see from the titles that we've done so far, this is number six, but um, we, we did this for investors, looking at how 
this this environment of business generation impacts investors, how it impacts SMEs and enterprise, um, a decision making pro who's influencing and, and what and how are CEOs being influenced. Looking at the technology that's being used that's supposed to generate and, and, and contribute to new business generation and looking at recruitment because you recruit marketing people, you recruit salespeople. And I'm saying that's that's broken, that process is broken because the people in recruitment done it, you know, not they're not experiencing it, they're just serving a need. They're just giving you what you up you've asked for. Anyway, that was last week's. All of these are online. Um, you can go to our YouTube channel and they're all there in sequence. And today is for startups and scale ups. And and part of that is the sin, like I say, the sins you don't know you're committing. We'll come on to that in a minute. Now, this isn't meant to be some kind of um, cheesy, oh, hi, how's your week been? Um, how have you been getting on? Hope you've had a wonderful week. It's not about that. It's to, this is to, is to, give a comparison. I've been dealing with storage issues and backups, website and local, um, website upgrades. Um, we use Joomla on both of our platforms. Um, I run two, two websites, one's business, one's, one's a, a faith-based website. And so moving from one platform to another and the upgrades issues, we're using staging sites and so on. Those of you that know what staging sites are, think, well, fair enough. Is, is, He's doing it the right way around, so that's it. The other thing we've been looking at is systemizing engagement. How do we do this? You've already seen probably the adverts that we put out on LinkedIn um, and so on, which are, th there are lots of them, yeah. Um, and what we're looking at doing is um, adapting that to video adverts because of looking at, this is all about engagement. Yeah, everything's about engagement and looking at future shows. I mean, the, 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 the thing about the, um, the future shows, I'll show you. So, so here, here, here's my list. Okay. I'll show you. Here's the list that we've got for our, our future shows. This, so th there's, there's quite a few of them. So there's no shortage of what can be produced or can be uh, presented on an ongoing basis. And so it, it, it takes time. It takes time to try to work out what, what needs to be done. Um, the other things we've got um, our podcast booth and sound panels set up. So here I'll just show you this very briefly. So there's our podcast booth. We've got our, the kit on there and mics and, and so on. So now we've got this, this environment, a, a kind of an enclosed environment that means we can um, improve the quality of our audio when we're just doing podcasts. Um, but it's not so bad. I mean, I, I, I've mentioned this before. I'll mention it again a bit later that um, one of the things that we do is after I've done the, 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 live, st the live stream, I take the audio and convert it and post it on our on Buzzsprout, which is our, our, um, our hosting platform for podcasts. And then that gets um, RSS fed out to uh, Apple and uh, Spotify and Google and oh, I think about 20 other podcast platforms. So we're really making the most of the content that we're producing. In fact, and the other one, the other picture is the studio that I'm in. I just thought what I should have done was this. If I do that, this is a studio. <laughs> what do I've got all the kit. Um, basically, so we've got these sound panels um, and, and the, the, the point of having these sound panels up, some people will know this obviously, and some people won't, but it, it's not to um, make it a, a cocoon, but it's 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 to absorb sound because when you get that that echoey sound when you're using microphones, it's because the sound bounces away from you and then bounces back into the microphone. So you're speaking here, and that fraction of a second comes back and bounces in. So what you need the the sound panels for is a diffuser, so it absorbs the sound, doesn't bounce back. So. So that's that's what we've got, and that kind of you can see the the kit and the layout that we've got here. I'll come on to this a bit a bit later, but but like you like I like I said, like I said, one person. Um, we've also got um, other other tools that enable us to um, just just increase improve the production value of this. So it's it you know it's not just a um, 
death by PowerPoint. I'll mention that a bit later, but <clears throat> you know, you've all been on the webinars and all you've got is a screen and you might have a, um, a, uh, a PowerPoint going on, but you don't get to see the person. And if they do, they've got their big ear cans on and a microphone and look like they're, they're gaming, whatever. So anyway, so that's that's what we've been doing. So the point of this is is looking at what's what goes on, what goes on in a typical organisation, because you're looking at this visibility, exposure, and engagement. What what have your people been doing? And you have you watching this this live stream. Yeah, this is something that you've got to keep in the back of your mind. What are you doing? What's been going on? How are you reaching out to your people, to your prospects? Um, and you can say, okay, well, what about you then? How's it been working for you? So it's been five weeks. This is the sixth show in this series. And so last week was five. Okay, so these are the statistics for five weeks. Okay. For those of you that are listening on um, podcast, we've had 5,000 LinkedIn impressions, which means people have seen what we're doing. And of those 5,000 impressions on just on LinkedIn, 350 have done something with it. They've looked at something, clicked on something and so on. Now, within that same period of time with the adverts that have been going out, we've had 335 people watch the live streams and 75 watch, sorry, 75 listen to the podcasts. That's 410 people have listened to what I've said in the past five weeks. It'd be good if it was 500, but you know, it's, it's building, it's, it's building. You know, I'm not, I'm not some YouTuber. I'm not someone that's got loads of, loads of followers. In fact, it's only, I'm connected to about 2000 people. I'm, I'm, you know, I, uh, what's the word? Not cautious, but I'm, you know, I, I'm discerning when it comes to connecting with people like you are. So 400, that's me, one person, and bear, just to give you kind of a bit of a, an idea, the website that you might go and look at, that I did that. You think, well, and? No, look, I did all of it. Every picture, every page, every piece of writing, every video, podcast, and live stream, and graphic, and infographic, and navigation, and structure. And if anybody knows who GT metrics are, I get, I get, I've, the score I've got on GT Metrics is A, with 97, 98 and 96% on speed and format and structure. So I did all of it. So we're talking one person doing this. If it was like, oh, it's okay for you, you've got, big, you've got a big marketing tip. No, 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 no. No. Like I said, this, this is me. This is where I work. Is my, my, my um, monitor up here. This monitor up here does a variety of different things. If I put it back to there, that shows... Um, you can you can see on here. Um, there's the live view. Um, this is the stuff that we've got on air, and these are the different cameras that we've got. So, the the, the point of this is one person. You have to put this into in. You have to factor all of this in. One person can reach 410 people in five weeks. Now, your BDRs, your telesales people can reach one person a week. 50, 60 calls a day, five days a week, 300 calls, 300 to one shot to find somebody that's interested. And they are pleased as punch if they spoke to that person for a minute or more. And your salespeople are sitting there going, as in, you see that twiddling your thumbs. Where's the leads? Now, this is really, the next slide, really, really important because it's about familiarity. You know, okay, you've got 400 people who have listened to you. If that was happening to us, how much, you know, when are they going to buy from us? I don't know. That's your job. You're supposed to know how much engagement someone needs before they buy from you. But bear this in mind, this is critical, absolutely critical to why businesses keep getting this wrong. Back in 1997, a guy called Jeffrey Lant in America, in the States, um, wrote this book called Money Making Marketing. 
And he said that in 1997, it, it would, you would need seven to ten um, attempts of getting something in front of a customer or a prospect before you became familiar, not a prospect, became, before you became familiar, before they became familiar with your brand. But at the time, one in three messages would get through for a variety of reasons, gone to lunch, um, gone to the loo, gone on holiday, not there, went into a meeting, didn't see it, and so on. So one in three messages would, would, only one in three messages would get through, which meant you need 30 messages. Go back X number of years and look at the mail shots, the, the, the postal mail shots that people were doing in business. They would send them out, do two or three, and stop. But it doesn't work. Email shots, that doesn't work. You know, social media, chuck something up onto social media, do it two or three times. No, it's not working really, is it? <laughs> no, of course not. Now look at it. So you can add them up, can't you? You've got, um, let me get this in the camera, LinkedIn, Facebook, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, X, any other social platform, plus what people engage with, which is um, YouTube and the noise and numbers of different platforms that are out there have grown massively. So we're 25 years later. So now you're looking at 20 to 30 touches to, for people to become familiar because they're just, just deluged with information. How are you going to stick out? How are you going to, how's your business going to stand out in amongst all of that? So if you need 20 to 30, and now they're saying one in, between one in five and one in 10, go with one in 10, go with the worst case scenario. You need between 100 to 300 messages. You know, if, if it was 30 messages to 30 touches, one in 10, 300. That's really serious. I mean, think about it, it's just like mind blowing. How much, how much, how much work would need to be done to do something like that? Because the other part of it, whilst repetition is a key, the other part of it is the people that you're who you're competing with, the eyeballs, the luxury brands, the well-known brands. They're all over LinkedIn, for example. So you're competing with them as well. Whether it's Seiko or, or you know, watches or anything, any any kind of brand. And of course, the, the videos look really good. Hence, I mentioned before about doing the videos. Yeah. So he's looking at how, how to capture and captivate a certain given audience in a very few, very short period of time. And that's why the YouTube shorts popular and reels are popular and so on and so on. But it's just short, short word bites, capture attention and so on. But that's what everybody's, that's what we're all competing with. So it's, you have to, you have no choice. It's not me coming up with some new strategy. You, if you're, Marketing people are not bearing this in mind, and they're probably not, because otherwise you'd be pushing out 300 adverts every week, every month. So you have to consider what, what has been going on and why. So we get onto this, onto this part here, which is the, the, the SIDS, you don't know, you know, that I, I moved back from this. I've got to remember that I've got to keep my microphone close to me. So the SIDS, you don't know you're committing. Yeah, okay, it's a bit kind of not tongue in cheek, but you know what I mean. So what happened before? Before we get onto these 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 seven deadly sins, what happened before? Well, if you look at early stage marketing with, relating to the internet and so on, before it was all about growing your email list. That's demand gen. It was all about um, doing, you know, knocking out PDFs, selling PDFs, getting people on webinars, platforms like Webinar Jam and stuff like that. Yeah. And DPP, death by PowerPoint. But that was lead gen. And then you look at um, persona and segmentation and, and ending up with spam, but persona and segmentation. And what we've we got now? ABM. Oh, we need to, you know, we need to, we've got 15, 16 or 8 to 16 people involved in the, in the buying, selling, buying process. We need to accommodate all of them. How many companies actually write individual separate, separately identifiable content for each of the decision makers that they are attempting to sell to. 
instead of just changing a title on something and, and chucking it out to everyone. It's just spam. And so the thing is, is that um, where we are now is the, the um, general consensus is that you as a business need a digital superstar. Everything that you did in the past was rubbish. You need a digital superstar now. You need us to come along and sort your lives out. So why are CMOs being fired every 9 to 18 months? Fact. Past 10 years. Fact. Give me a job. Three months to come in. Come up with a new plan. 12 months to execute it. Three months to find a new job. Because it didn't work. In B2B. B2B, B2B. Everything I talk about is B2B. I'm not comparing anything I'm doing or saying to do with consumers. And when it comes to consumers, you look at this and you go, well, you've got your four pillars. You, you know, we all know about that. If you looked at anything to do with marketing, product price, place and promotion. Do you, does your product fulfill a need? Yes, it does. What about price? Well, your pricing hasn't changed for ages. Probably. You're not fixing it to, to, to look at a market. You're not selling crisps. So then you come to place. Well, if you're selling crisps, just every supermarket, if you're lucky. But place. Well, how are you getting your message out to where? Whilst you can buy crisps in a supermarket, where can they buy your product? Where can they see your product? Where are you, where are you appearing? And promotion, how are you doing that? How are you appearing to them? Well, if you're doing consumer, you're just all the things that consumer doing. So you've got demand gen, lead gen, ABM, away you go again. But the, the TAM... That I've asterisks there. Your total addressable market. Who is it? Yeah. And that's why it's, you know, people talk about it in, in sales. Don't use it. Don't apply it. So the general consensus is, there you go, marketing's right, isn't it? Marketing, sorry. Marketing is marketing. Right? <laughs> Eat, shoots and leaves. So marketing, it's all, it's all the same. If you look at job boards, I look at them. You look at job boards. There's no differentiation between B2B, B2C. Because they think it's all the same. Marketing is marketing. You look at the university, you, you know, you, you, you put on your job descriptions. You want people with university degrees and SIM qualification and everything else and be done, you know, past master, sold billions, all that kind of stuff. But then it, there's no differentiation there. And then you look at consumer driven web and con web content strategies. And we've got consumer consumer driven pay per click strategies. We've got these two. So you look at the success of your your pay per click, your your ABC split testing pay per click adverts that you've got on, on Google. And look at the look at how successful they are. So you've got your pay per click to landing page, everything above the fold, list on the side, or sorry, form on the side. And you want the, 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 the customers, the prospects or browsers details who since uh, 2014 has not been wanting to fill them out. It's different when it's consumer. I, I fill it out with consumer stuff, but I won't do it on business stuff. You then got to look at um, SEO, SEM. You go, well, every, everybody does that. Why? People don't understand that you're, you're writing at your content for Google. If Google doesn't like it, you won't get indexed. Period, which means you'll never get found. That's how it is. That's how it works. Google's not a free platform. It, it kind of is, but it's not. You're writing for them. They want to serve up great content to their customers, not yours. Because there are certain things where they want prospects, people, customers, their browsers to look at that front page and then click away because they've got the information they need because they love Google. Google, it, 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 it's, it is a known fact that Google want people that are not at the age of buying so kids to treat google like a drug and you wonder why you're not selling anything and the final thing is is blogs versus articles so i've touched on this before but you should not have a blog and you're thinking the guy's nuts no i'm not you should have articles but not blogs you're not a uh, a uh, a uh, uh, a digital nomad just about to pitch up to some beach in Bali. 
You, you sell technology SaaS and services. You're not talking about the, the, the food you had on the beach. You don't need a blog. Blogs are pretty pictures with a few paragraphs. You're writing content. Your objective is to write content that educates, that is between two and 6,000 words long with bullet lists, clickable content sections, videos, graphs, infographics, number lists, yeah? Engaging educational content is what you should be producing every single step of the way, because that's what you want your prospects to read so that they will learn and buy from you. The blog about Christmas party jumpers last year didn't get much traffic. And nor did the article that was five, four or five paragraphs that everybody internally went, oh, it's great. Well done, Steve. Said no prospect ever. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm going at it from this perspective because I've done all this. Yeah, I've made all these mistakes. I, put, I doggedly pursued it. And now I know what's wrong. It's great. There's the solution. You'll love it. But, but well, you know, we're coming on to it. So the sins. We start with the first one, data acquisition. What businesses don't do, they don't go and buy and get hold of their total addressable market database. Because there's this assumption that, well, you've got a database. We've got a database. It's on, it's on, it's on Salesforce. We've got, we, we, we combine Salesforce with, with Sales Navigator and so on. We, we're fine. We don't, we, we don't need to buy any data. Wrong. Every region that you sell, you must have your total addressable database. That bit of data was in your business plan. That's why you started business in the first place, because you knew who you could sell to and what the market penetration could be for your product. The next one, digital marketing, stop it. <laughs> That's a bit like, but digital marketing, implementing digital marketing without fully understanding it is disastrous. It's digital marketing that's killing your company. I'm not gonna say, trust me, I know. Now you're starting to realize this now. Digital marketing technology was designed for consumers. It was not designed for, for businesses. You are selling technology SaaS or services. You're selling something that, that, that requires your expertise. You're not selling jeans. You know, I, I sign up to Red Bull. I sign up to I, loads of them, loads of different companies, loads of different sites. I haven't got a problem with that. To my Gmail account, no problem at all. Business, forget it. I'm not filling up my inbox with uh, a load of spam. It's bad enough as it is. So the point is, is that we're, we are selling, you are selling technology. We're, you know, we're involved in B2B, which is specialist stuff. Okay. So stop this, this thought process that digital marketing is what should happen and so on. Just stop. We'll come on to why and how, how this has happened in a minute. Because you're not getting the results that you want, you keep employing BDRs and telesales people that have got a, 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 this 300 to 1 success rate. It's madness. You, you wouldn't do it. I certainly wouldn't do it. And that kind of leads into, because of that, because it's not working, you've got ABM, you've got reverse IP lookup and gifting. And reverse IP lookup, excuse me, reverse IP lookup is, is stalking. Whether it's candy or, 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 or Lee Forensics or, I don't know, um, Cognizant. It's, it's, it, the bottom line is you've got these companies who've got data lake information that relates to business information. They've got business company names and business IP addresses. And sometimes they, they match them together when you fill out a form. So if you were to look at a company that's got the software on it, you can see your IP address. If you then fill out a form, it's then matched your IP address against your email address and your name, and now you're identifiable. Okay, that's so that market or whatever that that's how it works. So then they can see how much traffic and how much time rather you spend on their site looking at different pages. And if they did their job properly, 
which most don't, they go, right, okay, well, they've been on 27 times, they've spent 17 hours on the site, maybe we should give them a ring today. And they ring you up and go, get lost, I don't want to talk to you, because you're learning. Yeah? So that's how that part of it works. Now, if you add, if you put that onto um, the next stage and look at consumer spending, so there you are, you're thinking that you're going to buy your husband, wife, children a present. Nothing wrong with that. You're in, you know, lunch, go online, buy them a present, get it sent. That information, IP information, is linked now with Bombara. Bombara have now linked your personal email address with your IP address and your home address and your purchase details. That's gone into their data lake, which is matched up with the B2B data lake, which has only got your business location and name. Match the IP addresses together, bingo. They've now got your inside leg measurement and can call you at home on a Saturday morning to say, hi, we think you should buy blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, I just completely disagree with it. Third one, blaming the wrong, pimp, blaming the wrong people. Now... Salespeople have had a bad time of this for the past 10 years or so. It's not good. And marketers have been basically throwing stones in a big glass house. And what happens is people, you know, salespeople get given a hard time. And the reality is, is that you need to start earlier on in the process and go, we need a business case justification for a return on investment for absolutely every single thing that marketing does. Absolutely everything. It's critical before you justify continuing with that expense. Firing the wrong people. I'm going to talk about the, the, the tenure of CMOs, but the thing is you find... You're firing people, but you should be firing strategies because it's a strategy that's not working, not the people. But these people, they do anything. They do what they do as they're told. They do as they're told. They're, ad they're administrators. They're admin. So you've got to fire the strategy, not the people. I put this in because it's important about not recognising authority. Number six. And the thing is, is that your employees will talk to you in a certain way. Yes, sir, no, sir. Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, whatever. Yeah. But when it comes to prospects or browsers or whatever, they're just a mark. Like the hustlers use. Yeah, they're just a mark, someone to knock off. So they want to get their KPIs achieved by any means possible, because you've given, you've given them a, a KPI, you've given them a target. So they've got KPIs and they get a bonus if they hit their KPIs. Well, happy days for them. So all they need to ensure is that they've got their numbers, which lots of them do. And you go, oh, well done. You've been so clever achieving those KPIs. And <laughs> I, I've got to put it on there. So have you seen the um, uh, Pulp Fiction? John Travolta meme, and he's standing there with his, his jacket over one. I'm going, where are the leads? And that's what salespeople do. Where are the leads? How can, how can you have a marketing team forging ahead, achieving their KPIs when salespeople haven't got leads? You, 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 it's just, it's like we're, we're missing a trick here. So then the, the issue is, if it's KPI driven, they don't care what the content is. Who's going to care? Who's going to challenge it? And then you've got this whole ABM, ABM scattergun effect. To send it out to anyone. And number seven is prioritizing marketing. You think, well, what else are we supposed to prioritise? Uh, selling. That's, that's where the money comes from. Selling. Forget marketing. 
Businesses like to say that they are marketing led. Follow the marketing. It's a really bad strategy because it hasn't worked for B2Bs in 20 years. You think, well, it's a bit of a harsh thing to say. No, I'll wait until I come onto this, the statistics. You'd be sick. <laughs> but it's not worked. So saying you're marketing led, nonsense. You're sales led. 20 years ago, marketing, <laughs> or whatever, marketing were there to get a brochure out and, get, and do your business cards. That was it. Now they think they're running the company. I heard a senior person who was the CMO of Marketo and is now at Demand Base. One of his videos that are on on um, on YouTube, standing there in front of all these other marketers, saying, "We, you like this? We, we're calling the narrative. We're calling the shots. We're driving the company forward." And then brings out a. A, a book, a, a brochure that says about how, how, how you can protect and defend your marketing budget. I'm thinking, why would you want to protect and defend a marketing budget? Surely it's just going to work, isn't it? Protect and defend and bless him. If you're having problems with your CFO, give me a call. I'll speak to them. On your behalf, I'll tell them what the score is. Really? How how good to know? Just so caveat emptor, yeah. Buyer beware. At the end of the day, marketers are doing everything everyone else else in but in B two B marketing is doing. Everybody does the same thing. Demand gen lead gen ABM reverse IP lookup, um, gifting. And you've got to sprinkle in their pay-per-click for Google and so on. I, don't, I haven't got a problem with paying for banners uh, or certain pay-per-clicks, but, but looking at pay-per-click to landing page, trying to get people's uh, data and information so that you can call them up. No, everybody's doing it. It's an accepted practice. Nobody does anything different. And you think, well, why are you copying everyone when you're supposed to be a a creative marketer because they're not marketers have never been creative in b to b they're administrators they always have been there's nothing creative in setting up a marketing automation platform that's because they're all really proud of their martech stack you've got to see this for what it is your objective is to generate income not not enable some marketer to be sycophantic towards you i mean you look at this so why has it gone on for so long there that's why i love this <laughs> you, you've got these marketers whispering evil into ceos and and, and misleading them and, and and casting this spell on them this time next year rodney we're going to be millionaires which never happened convincing businesses that by doing this this all this technology we're, we're creating our own golden goose that's going to lay the golden egg every single month which never happened so why has this gone on for so long why does it keep happening because of Mordor not Mordor because of big tech martech they're the ones creating the software they're the ones that created the software for, for the consumer industry brilliant really clever really really clever and B2B's thought, oh, we could, we, we could, maybe we could use this. We'll stop us. We won't have to cold call then. We won't have to go out door knocking. So everyone bought into it. Again and again and again. So you've got to look at the, the logic behind this. And to, to explain the logic behind it is Daniel Kahneman. So Daniel Kahneman wrote this book about thinking fast and slow. Thinking fast is when you see something and repetition is a big part of this. And he mentions about repetition and marketing. So you've got this 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 repetition going on about demand gen agent ABM pay per click reverse IP lookup da 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 it goes on and on and on and on and on. Everybody's put into it. Starting a business without that, you'd be you would think that you would be nuts to try and do it. So 
Everybody, market from, from CEOs downwards, everybody's a marketer. Everybody knows what the score is. We have been told again and again through the hypnosis, through the people saying what we should be doing, that this is, this is the life, this is what we do, this is how it works. And you are derided if you think there's anything, anything different, an, an alternative. Whereas thinking slow means to be considered and thoughtful and research and evaluate. Of course, every business needs a blend of, of the two, right? But so you can see that, that, you know, this guy's a Nobel Peace Prize winner saying this is how we have all been influenced over the years. Yeah. So it's very, very important. So it's not rocket science. It, we, we can move on from this. Um, and the, 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 the critical thing is to look at the process. How, how did this come about and where have we been placed in this new business development process? And where are we? Where, what, what happens? So the first thing, look the, for those that are listening on podcasts, I've got a, uh, an illustration up here. And um, we've got this, uh, 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 like the yellow brick road, but it's not as green. Um, but we've got, so you, you can't come up with an idea. We're going to have it. We're going to start a, start a business. Great. Well done got your startup, you get a minimum viable product, sort out a business plan, then go for investment, build the product, sell it, marketing, and some problems happen, like happen with all, all companies and so on. So right the way through, that's that's how it works. Okay. Now this is this is the scary bit. In the UK, the average turnover per person per annum is 120 grand for businesses over 10 employees. I'll say that again. The average turnover is 120 grand per person per annum for businesses over 10 employees. Well, it's actually close to 50, but, but bear with me on this. So if we, if we kind of go with an, with an average and keep it easy on the numbers, yeah? Say it was 100 grand per person per annum. It's not complicated, is it? If your average is 100 grand per person per annum, you've got a 30% margin and your average salary for everyone is 40 grand a year, you're 10 grand negative. Not a complicated calculation. So, working on that premise, so we've got 100 and the, the, for bigger, slightly larger companies, say 120 grand or $140,000, give or take. I researched the larger software companies, business process management, and so on, um, RPA, so robotic, robotic process automation and enterprise architecture. So, the average was um, for, for BPM was 144 grand. Some, some, some were doing more, you know, some like Appian and, 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 and various like other companies were doing like 200 grand. Yeah. But the average is 144. Therefore, some will be less. Some are at the very bottom, some at the top. We're talking millions, millions and millions, billions turnover. 140 grand. Ceiling. There is a ceiling. Understand there is a ceiling. Um, if you then look at the statistics for businesses, this is critical. 20% of businesses will go bust in the first year. 30 in the second, 50 in the third, 70 by year 10. So overall, I think it works out to like 91% of businesses go bust over 10 years. It's the first. Second stat, I mentioned investment in this. Businesses that receive investment, 40% go bust, period. 75% don't achieve the targets that they set for themselves. And 95% don't achieve a return on investment for their investors. Ceilings. Keeps going wrong. So that kind of just gives a, a bit of a, an insight there. So that's where the problem starts. The marketing. It starts there after selling. So startup MVP, business plan, investment, build, sell, because you, you've got something to sell there now. And you start doing the marketing. So, oh, maybe we need to get CMO in. Maybe we need to do X and Y. And so this person that's been been around the houses, been told you've been told they're, they're a superstar. They come and do the same for you as they've done for other people. Bingo, you're back in the cycle again. If you're a startup, so you've gone all the way down to the end of the path. That's when you do a, sorry, 
scale up. If you're a scale up, you've done, you've gone all the way down to the end of the path. Now you're a scale up because you want to, you want to grow, you want to expand. How are you going to do that? How are you going to scale up? So whether it's your money or external money, you go and get investment. So you're back to investment. It's like snakes and ladders. So you go back to investment. So then investment, then you've got to build the product or the new product or improve or increase or do whatever, then sell it, then marketing, and you still got the problems. You've got problem, problem, sell, market, problem, sell, market, problem, sell, market. I had to, had to pause for that. You know? <laughs> problem, sell, market, problem. Because it doesn't change. Nothing changes. Because that's where everything's happening is at the end, that end point, the end point of that, um, that journey. Okay. So the solution, really simple. Shift where you tell people about it. So let's go through the journey again. Start up, great. MVP, great. Then do a business plan, a proper business plan, including your Tam Sam Som, your total addressable market, knowing that, that, that total number, and then going on to your serviceable addressable market, your serviceable obtainable market. All this information is supposed to be in your business plan in the first place, isn't it? Then look at how you're going to communicate this to people. Really important, critical, crucial. Educate your market how to buy from you. Teach them about your product. And people go, oh, I, 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 I don't want to show them that because this is really secret and private. Really? By the time you've, you know, you get to do whatever you're doing and, and, and getting this sent out, if someone's going to try and copy you, you're going to always be however many years development ahead of them. Don't worry about it. Oh, we're not, I'm not saying tell them your code, but help them understand how they can get the most out of your product. And you do that through articles, videos, live streams and podcasts. It's not complicated. These are all the things that people consume, that they can consume and remain anonymous. They don't want to tell you who they are. You don't want anybody to know who you are. You can watch this anonymously. That's the point. Anonymity. So you've done that marketing. Once you've done that marketing process and you've evaluated and you've got a pretty clear idea about who your market's going to be and how big it's going to be, do you need the same investment? Whatever the score is, is irrelevant, whether it's your own money or, or external money. But you get the investment, then you build it, then you sell it. And now you've got this process already in place about engaging people. And that's where we, I'm not, I'm not pointing the finger at you, that's where we have all gone wrong in B2B. I'm not saying the problem is going to go away, but they're certainly going to be minimised. Because if you, you know, you get to that point, if you go back to the, um, if we look at the, the previous one where, we, where we've got investment, if you get investment there, the investors and or your bank manager or your family or whoever's put money in, it's going to go, where is it? Where's the business? Where's the business? Where's the business? Where, what's happening? Come on, come on, come on, come on. And you haven't even started marketing it yet. So you're lining yourself up for a lot of grief. And then the grief is 20, 30, 50, 70 or 45, 40, 75, 95, going bust and suffering. You don't want to suffer. So that's why this process is sensible and logical. And you, you'd be thinking, OK, if we, do, if we do it this way around, how's it going to affect us? How can we change? How, you know, when, where, show me the money. You go, well, let's just go back to the timescales and how frequently you've got to communicate with people. If, if you're if you're going to knock out, you, you know, you can, you can write and do all the articles, but it's like that that adage, if you know, um, without telling people that they exist, it's like winking at someone in the dark. You know what you're doing, but they, don't, they haven't got a clue. So you've got to um, blend, correlate, combine this with creating the content and then promoting it. Promoting the content is simple and low cost and so on because you're producing a graphic or something that says, hey, if you're, you're interested in this, have a look. We, we have, um, it's going to go up because I mentioned about the videos, but we've got 288 pieces of content information that's, that goes out on a, cyc a cyclical basis to promote the content on the website. 
288. If you ever wanted to see something that was set and forget, you've got to see this. It's brilliant. It's great. I love it. Well, that's where we get the engagement from. Why We wouldn't get engagement otherwise. Oh, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm, it's like five, five, five adverts have gone out in the past hour on different platforms. Yeah. And the point, this, this point of doing this bit, and I come back, the point of doing all of this, yeah? If one person can do this, so can you. I've got two hands, two arms, two legs. You can do it. Anybody in your company can do it. It just takes some planning. So plan it, make it happen. And so the, the whole thing about different touches so what it takes load of time. I'm not interested. I'm not bothered how many times. One in ten, one in five. I'm not bothered. As long as I've got information going out and people can click on it and go, I recognise that. I recognise that. I recognise that. Happy days. I don't know what your product is. How how frequently do people need your product? I don't know. It doesn't matter. But people, you know, marketing have been going on. Oh, we've got demand gen lead gen ABM and all the others. But why doesn't it work? Because you're passive. You're sitting there waiting for something to happen. And when you get an inkling of somebody might be interested, you spam them and call it ABM. Not thinking, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't respond to it. So really, it's, it's, it's critical. And of course, you look at this and it's, you've got this impatience. You've either got, you want the kudos and stress and, and, or, and combined stress, associated stress. We're getting money from an investor. Oh, Dragon's Den glorifies that. Oh, look, they love the product. Oh, everybody loves me. But nobody's buying it. And if you look at the Dragon's Den stuff, that's all consumer. Or do you want calm and stress? And that's that. And, and, and stress, calm and success. Get my words mixed up. But yeah, calm and success. And it's just like, be patient, just, just chill. Because there is, there is this thing about um, when should you do this? How can you do this? You, you're thinking, we've already got the company going. We can't, we, we can't be waiting around for this, that and the other. Of course, you can't. come on to that in a minute. So a kind of summary of this is businesses have been misled by salaried employees, by administrators, people that do admin, an admin job. Misleading businesses about this time next year will be millionaires. It's just, it, it's never happened. <laughs> Not to anybody. And then sales got blamed. And I can, you know, I can, I can bang a drum about this. And no, no, auto, or no alternative was sought after. Because this is it. <laughs> this is the alternative. This is the alternative, everyone. Who would, who would not want this? If you go, oh, our, our customers would never would never engage with something like that. You're wrong. More searches are done on YouTube than are done on Google. People want to be, I need to get that gladiator image up there. Are you not entertained? They want to be entertained. They want us to find out. They want to learn. But they want the they want the the the, the production value. They, they can expect it. Why shouldn't they expect decent production value? They get it on television. Why can't you deliver it? Yes, you can. Yeah, so I've got a decent, you know, nice, nice office, nice kind of studio looking office. That's great. You've got spare space at your office, probably. Camera mics, lights, put a bit of gear up. You can make it look like a new studio. Do that now. You'll smash your competition. Wouldn't be able to touch you for dust. Because bearing in mind, I've got a small number of people that I speak to. So I'm not speaking to all your competition, but if you're listening to me, you're already in front. You already now know something that they don't. And they ain't going to change. So we're looking at this. This is what the deal is. Businesses keep going, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. No, it wasn't Einstein that said it, but it's a good saying. Yeah, the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over. And I kind of edit it and say, if you do what you've always done, you get what you've always got. Or if you allow marketers to keep doing what they are always doing, you are going to get what you've always got in your business. So something's got to stop and change. 
and decision is right now, whatever you're thinking, should you listen to your CMO who's not done anything different in 10 years or listen to me? See, I don't care. He does. He's got a salary. You're not paying me. And this is the, this is the critical point. You know, why, why am I doing this? I'm do, I want to change. I want to get every single business in the world to know that there's a better way of doing B2B new business. That's, that's my objective. And you, you know, <laughs> what do they call it? Um, go large, go home. So can it be repaired? Yeah. Well, for a start, avoid the hype. Um, how do people understand how people buy? Going back to basics, they are, you already know. <laughs> you don't need anybody to tell you because it's you. You're the person they're selling to. You're the person that you're selling to. How do you like to buy? Yeah. Just enable them to self-educate, self-serve. Yeah. And remain anonymous because they don't want you to know who they are. And they'll buy from you when they're ready. If you go, you've ticked all these boxes for me. I can read about you. I can learn about you. I can listen to you. I can watch you. I can see how you, how you throw your arms around, <laughs> how you behave. There's a, there's a, a likelihood, just a likelihood that you're getting the real me. Fancy that. This is live, live. Like, you know, this is properly live. I mean, I'd have to be a really good actor. And there are good actors around, don't get, of course they are. The thing is, is that you start to look at someone, you start to realise their transparency that you can find out about them. You go, right, this guy runs a business, he's also a, a believer, a Christian, runs a Christian website as well that's read by, I don't know, 12,000 people every year. I can find out all I need to know about this guy online because he's my, I've made it available. So can you. It's up to you how much, what you want to say, what you want to do. But the bottom line is, as long as you make your business transparent, because I, I am the business. It is me. Sales exchange is me. So therefore, you need you want to know what I'm like. You want to know what sort of person I am. If you want me to do consultancy for you, you want to know kind of what's and all what's happened. You know, who is this guy? Huh? Why is he talk with this authority or not authority? You, you might be thinking he's talking a load of rubbish. I don't care. I know I'm right because I've done the research. I thought slow about it. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's really critical. So, you know, you look at this stuff and you go, OK, well, being about being transparent, you want to get people to get to know, like and trust you. Then they can educate themselves, engage with you and then buy from you. This, this is selling, isn't it? <laughs> um, like it says on, on, the, on the screen. Nobody wants a phone call. Nobody wants to be cold called. Don't tell me about, I can save you some money. I saved all the money I need to. I'm in business to make money. I'm not a social service. We're here to make money, to be profitable. Saving money is finite. Leave that to CFOs. It's imperative. And don't give me any forms to fill out because <laughs> we all hate them. So quick, the market bit that we talked about before. How's it going to work? So if you've got four, in the UK, there are 44,000 companies that have 50 employees or more. You wouldn't sell to all of them. For example, you might be you do. I don't know. But say you took 10,000 of them as your total addressable market. One to 15 percent of your total addressable market are looking to start their buying process, meaning they're receptive to whatever it might be that you're selling. Yeah. One to 15 percent every week are starting to look and begin their journey, their buying journey. That's 100 to 1,500 people every week out of 10,000. So, telesales 300 to one shop, forget it. Because to try and get to 100, you need 100 BDRs, 50 grand a year, 5 million a year in salaries, not going to happen, not ever. So all it means, this, this whole market thing, means educating your total addressable market. Like I said here, that's the point. That's the market point. That's where you start educating them. OK, so how would you go about doing it? Well, it's pretty simple. It's straightforward because you're going to review all your content. 
Make sure it is educational. Make sure it's got, it's sticky. Make sure it's engaging. And if you don't know, get call me up. Ask me to read it. Yeah. Then there's Social 444, which is producing a minimum of 120 adverts. Four adverts, four days a week, four adverts, four times a day, over four weeks, and repeat. And the reason you do four and repeat is because nobody, no social media platform will stop you from doing it, apart from Twitter. You've got to have more than that on Twitter, but we, it's not really the platform for this. But you're cycling your content. You're cycling and not just not just for the social platform, but you're cycling it because how often do your people go onto their platforms and see you what see what you're doing and so on? You promote your content, not your products. You stop worrying about SEO and SEM because you don't need to because you're doing the adverts, right? And if you were doing the adverts, for example, it costs you 50 quid a month. How much are you paying for pay-per-click? Not 50 quid a month. Um, don't worry about indexing because if Google doesn't like it, they won't index it. But the thing is, your prospect may well like it. And the evaluation of how good your content is, is going to be good enough for you and your prospects because you can ask your prospects direct. Do you like this piece of content we've written? Yes, no. That's all you need. You don't need Google to do it because Google's got millions and millions and millions of other websites that it could present content to their customers with. Don't worry about pay-per-click to landing pages. Stop that and stop digital marketing. So these are all very straightforward things you think, blimey, this is like, imagine how much money you're going to save. So then to kickstart your engagement, you do this. This is it. Set up a live stream. Think about this. Think about it really, really. You, you can use this. Yeah. You can use an iPhone for it. The the um, the the, um, the keynote, the, the the Apple event on the thirty first two days ago, was shot on an iPhone fifteen. So, if you've got iPhone fifteens, fourteens, thirteens, you can use them as your cameras. There are pros and cons, but you can use them as a camera. So it's not about the money. And they've got, they've got three lenses on it. So <laughs> it's not about the money. It's about the strategy. You've got to understand the strategy. So you get your database, buy your database, if you, and you should have it. I mean, you, I shouldn't be saying this to, to a lot of companies, but you should have it if you're a, a certain size and there isn't any particular um, parameter for that. You, you know if you should have it. But the, a, a, a database will cost you about 350 quid, 350 pounds per thousand names. So once you've established the SIC codes, you know which SIC code is going to be relevant, go and get the data, bingo, and you're going to have the, the company name, address, telephone number, email address, web address, CEO's name, and so on and so on. That's all you need. And then you take that information and you email them using... Uh, MailChimp, for example, MailChimp. You could use MailChimp because all you're doing is sending out an email. You don't want a response. You're not looking to engage with them in that way. You're just looking to inform them to say, hi, we're here. We exist. In fact, why don't you come and join our live stream? See what we're, talk see what we're talking about. We've got other customers like you, yeah, whatever you want to put in their email. And then the, you start your live streams, you have a build up to a live stream, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. You do your live stream and the week after you go, we did the live stream last week, this is what we talked about last week, this is what we're going to talk about next week. Come and join us. It's not complicated. But if, you're, if you've got 10,000 people, how on earth do you engage with 10,000 people? You can't. You've got to sit there and be passive. And that's what's expected of you. Whereas this, it says, come and join us. Oh, look, we've got... 100, 200, 300, 400 people watching us today. Oh, it's great. Thanks for joining us. You've just eclipsed everything that marketing has ever done in its history. One show. You have to think about this really seriously. So broadcast a live stream. 
record it. It already gets recorded. I'm recording it here locally as well, actually. And then I take it off here, do what I need to do if I do need to do anything, and then put it onto Buzzsprout. So you could engage five or 250, I don't know. Depends on the type of market. But you could probably bet your bottom dollar your competition are not doing this. And this is just about, well, what, what, what would we do? Where would we start with this, you know? We do this live streaming, camera mics and lights. You're live in three, two, one. You give that to the salespeople. Don't give it to marketing. Do not give it to marketing. Marketing don't sell. Marketing do admin. Salespeople sell. Get people in front of the camera going, getting, getting like a, a rabbit in the headlights. Oh, I've got life. Oh my God, I, I thought I was going to be really good at this. I'm not, I'm really crap. Um, what? And then put some, sit someone else next to them. It doesn't have to be one person. You can have two people, have one person there, another person there. Bit of banter, bit of fun. I did a previous some previous streams. We talk about that's another story about another kind of engagement process. But the whole thing about doing the live streams have two people. You've got that banter or three people, two people in the office, someone in another country. That's why we've got this stuff, yeah. Or this, you know, you can have all, all, four, you can have four different people there, yeah. So it, it's about the production value. It's about going. Oh wait a second, we. Can, so you've got someone in New York, someone in London, and someone in Paris. Plus the slideshow. You've got to, you've got to, and it costs pennies to stream this. Now I use, I use a platform called Restream. Um, and it's like, I don't know, 40, 50 quid a month, something like that. I, I can't remember. But I stream to them, and if you, I showed you that, didn't I? On here, if I change the, that over, you, I, I showed you this 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 view before. Yeah, this bit here says on air, and so I can see that I've been on air for an hour and thirteen minutes. Data rate is good, cache is okay, everything's fine. So I stream to them, okay, and they push that information out to um, YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn simultaneously and it's stored on those platforms as well and i record it here and then i can do whatever i want with it afterwards and you can restream it again and again and again and again and it as often as, as, as often as you like but the bottom line is you get the kit you can bring together your people from all over the world on a stream and it's this i mean this is this is good quality I mean, I, I know this is good quality. If you look at um, camera two, you know, it's, this is good quality stuff. Yeah. And that's and that's what this is about. It's, it's about having the right kit, the right time, knowing how to use it, getting it set up and then press one button and you go live. So it's not complicated, but it is it's everything that people want to see. So moving on. Coming into land, as they say, implementation is pretty straightforward. There are because you, you 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 need to know this. You could do a wholesale change, maybe maybe not. Most people may even opt to go in and do something in parallel. Um, you could do it by yourself and look and and do and not involve me at all. Go on a website. All of the information is on the website. Absolutely everything. Or you might want to say, okay, Nigel, heard what you said. We like this. Oh, do you know what I didn't do? I, I, I didn't do this bit. This was the other thing. So I'm, I'm Nigel Main, by the way, <laughs> in case you didn't know. So the, the, and the whole point is saying, right, well, you know, we've got this. We've got this, the ability with it, this, this kind of TV like production. But all the information is there. There's loads of live streams and videos and, and documents. Why to how to why should you do it? Why how to do it and so on. Um, and and, and the, 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 so looking at what I would do in terms of evaluation, I would tell you, you need to do X, Y, and Z, and so on and so on. And then you would need to obviously need to decide how you would want to implement this as part of your ongoing strategy. Because this is not an overnight thing. I mean, depending on how you run your business, you could turn around and go, that's it, do it now, start now. 
Or if you want to involve your other directors, um, yes, they will need to know what's going on. Um, and as part of that, one of the things I, I was talking about evaluation, what we were doing in terms of um, systemizing engagement, I'm in the process of writing a script and I want to keep the script to 20, 20 minutes. And the reason I'm going to keep it to 20 minutes is because it's going to be kind of a generic presentation as if I were presenting to your board of directors. OK, so it's, this is who we are, what we do, how we do it. And this is how it works out. These are all the component parts. These are the reasons to do it. And so trying to condense everything as much as I can. So you can distribute that to your board of directors. Say, watch this and we're going to have a Zoom call or a Teams call or whatever with this guy on such and such a day. And then they can ask me anything they want. And then prior to that, then there could be an evaluation afterwards to look at what you do have, what needs to be done. And bearing in mind, it's not about loads of people. We can con you can contract out to place people like Fiverr and this and the other. But as long as they are guided and have templates as to what they need to do, it's not a problem. And finally, well, you could turn and say, sort it out. And I'd sort out everything, start to finish. Um, and, and I would, and again, one of the, um, the things about it, I would say, because we are, we're, we're, we're going to come into a close now, is you need time to think. You have to think about this. You have to think about what you have been doing for the past one, five, 10, 15 years or whatever, looking to generate business, business to business, business. Um, and, and, and the results that you've got. But if one person, me, can get 410 people to listen to me after for only five weeks or within five weeks, how many could you get? And the only thing I'm not doing, I'm not messaging my total addressable market. I'd be mad. I couldn't afford it, I should think because it's every single B2B organisation in the world. So who am I going to message? Yeah. But in your case, it's going to be different because you've got your product, you've got your, you know who, you, who your total addressable market is, how many, where they are and so on. And so that that's it. And the point is, let people remain anonymous. You produce great content and stop throwing good money after bad. That's my advice. <laughs> So it's not so the, um, it, it is, as it says at the bottom of this, it says it's digital marketing for B2B that's failed, not your salespeople or product. The future is still bright. And that's it. Um, next week, the sales exchange story. It should be fun. <laughs> Some of it is really awful. Um, wouldn't wish it on, on anybody, but it's all part and part. It's what makes us up. It's what makes us who we are. And it's an important part of the, the streaming sequence, if you want to put it that way, because the most popular page on your website or on websites is the About Us page. Simple. People want to know who you are. People buy people. Have a, if you have an About Us page, which is all business led, oh, we're this company, we're that company, we're, we're super brilliant, blah, blah, blah. People switch off because you just kind of disingenuous in terms of I want to I want to know about you. Who are you? Who are your people? And so this is this is me. Kind of warts and all. So that's it. End of another show. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you've got any questions, anything at all, any queries, message me. Um, I, and I say I, I don't tend to get many messages. Because. I think people are kind of stunned with this. And why, should, why shouldn't you be? But if you made it this far and you got it to the end, go and have a coffee, chill. It's only time for a pint. <laughs> but that's it for me and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.